effectively thanks to true leadership and courage, as exemplified by Groveton's first African-American student, Rayfield Barber, class of 1964. This has been a, a really good weekend uh, for me. I, uh, uh, the chance to come home, uh, the chance to come back to this school, uh, see a lot of people that were uh, very helpful, very instrumental those first days at Groveton High School. And uh, just good to renew those friendships. As a uh, freshman, uh, the uh, courts had uh, acquiesced to our request to uh, come to Groton. And uh, that first year, I was, I guess, 1961, I was here as a uh, freshman and uh, was, I, I thought, uh, received very well uh, by the student body, uh, especially with other things that were going on in the country at that time with uh, school desegregation. Uh, that freshman year, I was elected a class officer. I participated in uh, freshman athletics. Uh, under some duress, because I understand uh, later I was uh, let to be known that uh, the freshman schedule at one point was going to be canceled uh, because of uh, the uh, uh, black athlete uh, playing. Uh, not that I was going to be beating up on anybody at, at that point in time, but uh, uh, some of it was for safety reasons. Uh, the school and the county, I guess, have received some threats about uh, uh, athletics on the field. And uh, our freshman schedule, I think, was modified to uh, have all of the freshman games that we ended up playing, I think, were played here at Groton. I, part I participated in the student government activities throughout my uh, four years at Groat, and uh, I was a freshman class officer. Uh, in fact, the only male class officer of that freshman class. And uh, again, my sophomore year, I think I was vice president or something of the sophomore class. And then as a senior, I ran for uh, student government vice president and was elected to that office. Uh, and things at Groton were, were fine. Uh, as a uh, elected official in the student uh, government uh, later found us, we ran into some difficulty with uh, my participating in the state convention, uh, which was down in Harrisburg, Virginia. I think now what is James Madison University uh, at that time was an all-girls school. And uh, when the state organization found out that Groton had a uh, African American uh, to come down there. Uh, they had requested that the school send someone in my place. And my high school, Groton, and other high schools in the Northern Virginia area uh, banded together and said, you know, no, this is the representative that the student body elected and uh, he'll participate. And with the uh, with that statement from Northern Virginia, some of the Tidewater schools uh, joined in, and uh, they later uh, relented, and uh, I was, it was okay for me to attend the conference, but not stay on the campus, uh, because at that time, I, I forget the name of the school, but uh, we did make arrangements through uh, the minister at our church uh, with the minister down in Staunton, Virginia, where I would stay off the campus and attend the activities uh, for the uh, student government representatives. Another uh, problem there was the opening ceremonies uh, being in the state of Virginia. Uh, I think the opening song was going to be uh, uh, the song of the Confederacy or something like that. And the uh, representatives from the schools uh, thought that maybe we should sing another song uh, for that opening ceremony. And I felt real proud of being in that generation. We had our shortfalls and we, did, we had a lot of problems that things we shouldn't have got into and did, but all in all, I'm real proud to be a, uh, we did something. I mean, we said, we said no to war, and we said no to the environment, and we said no to this, to the racism in this country. And was, I was talking to Joe Parks last night, where in 1963, when they passed the Civil Rights Bill, five, we all thought by 1995, everything was gonna really, I mean, we thought in 10 years, everything was gonna be great, you know, all this, and it seems like it's worse sometimes. I mean, it seems like things are getting worse, and I think it's 
the economic condition when times get rough, everybody gets on each other. I don't know. But I was, I'm real surprised that things didn't get better. History teacher Jack Hiller recalls that there were other changes later in the 60s. Uh, when I started teaching here in uh, 1959, this was a uh, very conservative uh, place. Uh, students uh, were to wear belts in their pants, and uh, girls weren't even allowed to wear culottes. Uh, boys' haircuts had to be, you know, two fingers above their eyes, and uh, shirts always had to be tucked in, and it was kind of an uptight little place. And as we went through the 60s, everything began to kind of disintegrate, as it did in the rest of the country. I uh, went on sabbatical in 1968 and, uh, to Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. When I came back, I was shocked by how the school had changed. Uh, students were protesting. Uh, they were wearing uh, clothes that were mark mock military with peace symbols all over them. They were extremely um, uh, anti-authoritarian. A teacher uh, was uh, someone who you uh, told uh, to uh, go to hell if you felt like doing that. I was really quite shocked. Their language was absolutely awful. When I, cl when, I, when I closed my eyes, I thought I was back in a military barracks. And when I opened my eyes and saw their clothing, I thought I was in a mental institution. Uh, the, uh, the, the atmosphere around here was very uptight. And um, uh, I, I find myself embroiled in that. Lots of student demonstrations. Um, a lot of kids didn't take baths. Uh, they smelled awful. It was a, a grew their hair long, uh, grew beards. Ugly was in. Um, it was just a different world than what I had left. Uh, but slowly that that began began to change in in the 70s, uh, uh, and uh, there was I guess a swing back uh, to a more moderate middle kind of uh, position. Uh, uh, clothing, uh, well, we, we weren't as hung up on, on the type of clothes people wore or how they wore their hair or where they had facial hair. Uh, that kind of thing uh, died out uh, over the time and uh, we, we learned to uh, live with each other. It was all part of the Vietnam era, part of the protest era. And the kids here were simply reflecting what was going on around the country. Uh, and uh, it, it was an era of, of, of great change, great tension, great pressure, great protest, um, and uh, we, we managed to get through it uh, somehow. Leslie Overstreet, Mark Medvin, and Danny Ehrman, all class of 67, reflect on how things changed during their period at Groveton. It wasn't until way later that I started uh, you know, exploring beyond those sorts of things. I don't really remember much of the political activity and, and uh, issues either. I was, I was not particularly uh, politically active myself, and, and I don't really recall Groveton being that politically uh, aware or politically active. Um, I remember the pressures to go on to college because of the draft. Uh, everybody didn't really have much choice in the matter. It was basically go to college or uh, be drafted and, and head off to Vietnam. Um, so uh, the main thing I remember is, uh, is trying to uh, sort of fit in socially and see where, try and figure out where exactly that was. The year 1970, um, I lived with a bunch of friends out in Springfield, high school friends, uh, four high school friends, uh, and uh, got busted for drugs, and uh, that kind of was an eye-opener. Um, wasn't a big deal, we got off, none of us did any time or anything. Uh, case was dropped. Uh, moved back in with my father, and uh, Painted his house all that year, uh, 1970, and uh, he was recently remarried, uh, and so I got to be with his new wife and, and sort of get to know a whole new family. 
uh, and it was a it was a great time. And, and when January '71 came around, I was ready to go back. I was fed up with my dad and his wife, ready to move on back to a new life uh, mm -hmm. back in college at Penn State, and uh, had a wonderful time. Went just breezed through college. I almost flunked out. Went back. Uh, was on the honor roll my last year. So. It was something I wish I'd done well before that. The 50s, you know, the bebop, doo-wop era, uh, kids were a lot more innocent. I mean, it seemed to me like in the late 60s and early 70s, kids grew up a lot faster. They were more street smart. Uh, they were more, uh, they were less naive about the foibles of life, you know. Uh, I was really wet behind the ears. I mean, I didn't know anything about the birds and bees, and I knew nothing about uh, uh, the kinds of things that the kids in the 60s, uh, the hippie generation, I mean, there were changes in dress code and changes in behavior patterns and a lot more freedom. Kids weren't as disciplined, I don't think. I mean, it seemed like the parents didn't have as much control of the kids in the late 60s. Terry Anderson, class of 1969, um. When I first started, I really noticed that there were uh, cliques, there were groups, there were people that were uh, the intellectuals or the collegiates and the jocks or the arty people. Um, I think by the time I left, I had a more sense of uh, uh, people were friends throughout the groups. And I think that might have had something to do with the peace and love that we experienced in the late 60s and an acceptance of differences and a tolerance and an interest in things that were different than you, rather than needing to be in your own clique or your own group. My life after Groveton, uh, I went to art school, uh, being the layout artist. Uh, I went to several art schools. It took me 10 years to graduate from college. I kind of searched around, moved around, worked, kind of led a hippie lifestyle, a, a wood-burning stove, outhouse, pottery studio. Uh, I settled in Morgantown, West Virginia, lived there for nine years, um, eventually finishing a degree in painting and printmaking, and uh, moved back to, the air, the, to this area um, in the early 80s after a failed love affair, um, and went back finally, got my master's, and I'm now teaching. Um, I really felt like um, I could do that. I didn't feel pressured to have to be somebody other than who I was. I didn't feel like I had to have a career. Um, and I think that is a lot of the signs of the times as well, you know, the find yourself <laughs> kind of generation. Um, it, it took a while and, you know, now I have a good job and I'm contributing to society, so, you know, it's all <laughs> turned out all right. Uh, um. The changing role of women has also been a challenge to Groveton's graduates as reflected by Linda Blair, class of 60, and Joyce Birchall and Peachy Pumphrey of the class of 64. In general, the question now for a lot of people is aging parents. It's a big issue for a lot of people. But another big issue for the women is estrogen. <laughs> yes or no? How are, how are people deciding as far as you can tell? Nobody knows. This is something where it just depends on the last study that you read and uh, whether to take it or not. But it's, uh, when we were in high school, I can't imagine those kind of conversations about medical topics. I'm going through a very amicable divorce, and it's, it's like I'm starting life all over again. And it's been, this has been just like a shot in the arm. Our society now, I don't think we tend to stick with our original spouses. There are a few here, though, and they, they're sort of like novel. Change. Oh, of course. People try different things, do different things, um, get tired of doing the same thing over and over. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a very changing community, society. So I've been through a bad marriage, which has made a big impact on me, make it, made me look at things differently. Um, life has been good. It's been good. There's, there's been a lot of changes. You go through so many changes, and when you're at this age now and you look back, it's funny because you can see the things that you went through during your 20s, and then you go through in your 30s, and then you get into your 40s, and it's like, hmm, 50s around the corner, and you start looking back then, and it's like, 
wow, you know, I made it this far and I've been through all this, you know, life's pretty good now. It's doing great. <laughs> so. History teacher Jack Hiller recalls